Good morning. It's Stacy from PeonyLaneDesigns.com. Have you subscribed to the channel? If not, click that little blue button right there because you're not going to want to miss this. We're using tongue oil. Don't forget to click the subscribe button, comment down below, like this video, and click the bell icon to be notified. By a special request, you guys have asked me to please demonstrate the tongue oil uh, when I used it on this particular lovely mid-century piece. There's been a repair to the veneer on here, and I don't know if anybody can see it. Let me know if you spot it. <laughs> it was a combination uh, art project for my husband and I. Anyway. We're going to use tongue oil to uh, protect the drawer fronts. So the, the drawer fronts have been stripped down to the veneer. The body is painted, but we need to protect this so that, you know, it's, it's wood. You want to give it a little protection. I like tongue oil. It gives it a rich, protected look without having that, you know, clear coat, glossy feel or that like there's definitely something on top of it. This actually goes into the wood. It feels like wood when you touch the front. It feels like there's nothing on it, but it is. It's protected and it gives it a wonderful little bit rich, gives it rich color. It'll make the color pop on this. It's not really hard to use. It does stink a lot and it's very sticky. So you'll notice I'm wearing gloves <laughs> because this stuff is uh, very, very sticky. Um, it's like sap. It's, I thought it came from a nut, but maybe it is a sap. I don't know exactly anymore what it comes from. No, nope, I have no idea. Anyway, I thought it was a nut, but it's called a drying oil. So it's an oil that you put on and it looks like an oil and then it will penetrate into the wood, protecting it from the inside out and it dries to the touch. So you don't feel that oily feel that you'll feel like if you do uh, like a beeswax or anything like that on it to protect a finish or the oil that you put on a cutting board, it's still an oil. This stuff will dry to the touch. So ideally two coats, I usually go with one depending. I mean, this isn't gonna get a whole lot of use. Under here is where, where people are going to be touching and that's painted. So I painted underneath here to match the gray that's in here. But the drawer fronts themselves are not going to get a whole lot of abuse and use. It's not like somebody's going to set a coffee cup on it. So I'm probably just going to do the one coat on this as well. Between coats you just sort of scuff it up with a little scuff pad and you know hit it again. But the process is the same. Um, it's got one of these lids. It's like a paint lid. So you got to pry it up or a stain can. Of course, I have a hair in my eye. One sec. That always happens to me when I'm just about to do something sticky and I'm going to one day glue my eye shut. Anyway, I'm going to take my sweater off too, just because I don't want to get this stuff on it. So I'm going to pry it open with paint key. You can use a, uh, screwdriver and you can see it it's well loved I've used mine a lot all you will need is a lint-free cloth now I have old flour sack towels that we've used in our kitchen and now they're all frayed and icky and now I've cut them up for rags do I want to cut this again hang on because this is a really big piece I'm gonna go cut this I cut it down just a bit because after you use the tongue oil, this is garbage. So you're not going to be able to use this again. Um, lint free because it's sticky. Like I said, it's sticky. You want to make sure that you're not using like a terry cloth or some other thing that's going to leave fibers behind because they're going to be stuck all over it. So I've got my lint free flour sack towel. Old t-shirts work too. You put it on the cloth and you're just going to wipe it on in the direction of the grain. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm 
mean, you want to make sure it stays fairly even. Do your best to feather it out when you're leaving a spot and then feather it in. Now I'm going against the grain just to blend everything. And then I'm gonna pull with the grain one more time. And you're gonna let it dry. Freddy. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the whole rest of the dresser. And uh, we'll see the whole finished product. This is not going to be a hugely, uh, well, a very long video. It's just because that's it. <laughs> that's it. And now that it's pretty much done for that drawer, I just wait for it to dry. It's sticky like this. I'm glad I'm wearing the gloves because it's very sticky. For those of us that have issues with gluing ourselves to things, this is not something you want to get on your hands. It smells like, I don't even know, it smells like tongue oil. It's, it's almost like a stain smell. It's almost got like a stain smell. And I'm going to stop right there because if you can see, there's some light marks here and down here. That's where the clear coat that was on the old dresser didn't get broken through and I was sanding. Now, sanding this is a bit of a challenge just because it is a veneer and I broke through once already. And I am deathly concerned that if I try and go after this, we're gonna have a little bit of an issue, but I don't have a choice. We need to even out that situation so that we don't have these white marks, these light marks. So right here for sure is clear coat. There's going to be some, you know, differences in the color based on the grain pattern, but it shouldn't look like that. It shouldn't be like super beautiful, dark, and then boom, white. Um, definitely clear coat left behind in that spot. And I'm noticing here large patches of clear coat that are still there. Now, I couldn't see it or feel it when I was sanding and I had done a finish sand on it. And I should explain to you what I did to prep the surface. Now I sanded off the old paint and I did that with a 60 grit. And then I went back with a finishing sandpaper at a 220 grit to smooth it out before I did this. I swear to God, I had no idea there was still clear coat on there. It didn't look clear. It didn't look shiny. I mean, you can see it doesn't look shiny. So yeah. I gotta have to go back and hand sand that. So I'm gonna do that first and then we're gonna finish it. But I'll be honest, it terrifies me <laughs> just because I've already broken through the veneer at one point on this dresser and I don't wanna do it again, especially not in a place that's as visible as that. So bear with me. So maybe that's a good thing that that happened because then you can see what you need to do. I mean, you can see what it looked like when there was an error. So I've sanded that again. And I've re-sanded this whole drawer <laughs> and this drawer just to be on the safe side. I mean, I just kind of went over all the drawers to be on the safe side. There is no color and tongue oil. So this is just the color of the wood. This is what, if you wet this wood, this is the color that it would be. So, am I hurting that? That's just the color of the wood. There is literally no color in the tongue oil. So I didn't know if there's going to be people like, I don't want to darken my wood. This is the color of the wood. Okay. You can tell from where I spit on the drawer. Added my DNA to that. <laughs> Gotta wait for it to dry now. <sighs> Go away, spit. Okay. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. And then we're going to hit it again. All right. 
pray for me. Every old piece of furniture throws you some kind of curveball, and this one has tossed a couple at me that I'd like to throw back. Pray for me. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Now let's try this one. It certainly brings out the scratches in this one. Uh, so this one was, I think I mentioned before, it's all boys that have owned this dresser. So it's been through several generations of the men in one family. And there are nicks down here that I see <laughs> that look like knife marks, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. We'll just blend that in. <laughs> <laughs> I do see one little white spot here. We're going to deal with that situation. Other than that, I'm going to go after the whole rest of this thing. Okay, now before we finish, we got to do, when this dries, we're going to hit it with, I'm going to use this. So this is a ultra fine scuff sanding sponge. This is for like automotive finishes. I use this instead of steel wool because I hate steel wool. And there will be that one guy in the comments that goes, you should have used steel wool. Yep, hate me. Anyway, that was professional. This is what I'm using um, in place of steel wool. So this is what you would use on like a finished coat, a clear coat. This is, um, as you can see, for polish. Let me show you. For polishing. So the ultra fine polishing uh, scuff pad. It's the final step in the car. And I use it because my husband uses them when he does vehicle graphics. And now I've just come to use them instead of steel wool. I'm going to cut this down because I don't want to use the whole thing. I'm going to use this much. And um, yeah, in place of steel wool, if you don't like, like, I don't like getting the metal fibers in my hands and I really can't stand steel wool. Same thing. This stuff, it works just great. It's brilliant. Thank God every day my husband turned me on to this, although he was really annoying about it at the beginning. Here's the sanding sponge we're going to use on this. It needs to dry a little bit and I'm getting high, so I'm going to go out and have a water and come back later. <laughs> and that's it. And this finishing polishing thing just smoothed it out. So if you open the grain when you put the the tongue oil on. It takes about 40 minutes to dry. So I waited, we went and had lunch, came back, and then um, hit it with this and just smoothed out the surface. Now it's very smooth. And as you can see, turned out pretty nice. That's it. That's all you do to use tongue oil. Now the results of this are a little dodgy because there's a spot down here that... <laughs> They're gouges from the previous owner. Somebody had uh, loved it a little too much. And unfortunately, because there's no color in this, if it gouges through to the original, uh, the wood underneath it is like a golden oak. So <laughs> the veneer is darker than the gouges. You can't see it on camera, but let me get you closer so you can see what I'm talking about. And there you can see them. Um, this is through the veneer and into the golden oak. So I'm going to have to see if I can find something to touch that up. There's some stuff over here too. If this wasn't a veneer, this wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but that's it. That's using tongue oil. And actually the finish is really nice. If this was solid wood, if it wasn't a veneer, you wouldn't have that. Everything would match. It would be the same color wood everywhere. So I will see what I can do about getting a little stain in there, touching it up a little bit. Um, I have some stain sticks that I'll just touch those up, see if we can match it much better. But all the other drawers look good. And I don't even think you can see which drawer 
we made, I actually sanded through the veneer on. It's on that side. You guys let me know if you can tell me which drawer it's on. I'll be interested. Comment below and let me know if you think you see it and which drawer it's on. So thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet gotten one of your Happy Junkin' shirts, don't forget to click the links below. We also have the new Second Mouse Gets the Cheese line of products. And if you'd like to buy me a coffee, that's always an option. It's like Patreon without the monthly commitment. All the money from that goes back into supporting this channel. So it all goes back into testing products for you guys that you want me to test. If there's something you'd like me to try, comment in the description below. And if you would like to send me a thrift flip challenge, you can always send it to the P.O. Box. Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy junkin'. Bye. Visit my blog, peonylanedesigns.com, for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week. DIY tutorials, and of course, more Junkin' videos.